Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks Some More. Right, so today Bojo the Clown said that jib jab passports would be needed for international travel. He said on Sky News. So what was it a few weeks back? There will be no vaccine passports, said the lying vaccine minister, said Michael Gove. Oh no, there's no vaccine passports. And then after a couple of weeks, oh, it was, hmm, we're considering it, maybe, maybe. And now, yes, jib-jab passports, yes, we're bringing them in, jolly good show. Bunch of liars, full-time charlatans, deception, duplicity, oozes out of every pore of these so-called statesmen. They are just playing everyone in the UK and overseas, playing donkey and the carrot, playing, let's pretend we don't know what we're doing. When the blueprint for the next 10 years is set in stone, probably much longer. So here we have another one of those deliberate leaks of information. GP surgeries, hospitals and supermarkets are set to be exempt from COVID vaccine passports as Boris Johnson prepares to announce more details of scheme on Monday. Ministers drawing up a list of essential buildings to be excluded from the scheme. It comes as Boris Johnson is set to outline more details of the system on Monday. Pubs, clubs and restaurants could be made to implement a jab passport scheme. So pubs, clubs and restaurants could be made to implement a passport scheme. So they're saying they're going to maybe force pubs and restaurants to engage in this. No choice. I'll tell you what, look, if I was running a pub, if I was running a restaurant or whatever, and I was asked to do it, I wouldn't do it. I know you will say, I've got got to make money. I've got to pay my mortgage. What for? I mean, if you commit to this style of life, it's going to be shite. It's not worth it. Ask yourself, what do you want? Money or happiness? Do you want a material life? devoid of emotion, turning you into a robot, or do you want a spiritual life where you can be free and experience both happiness and sadness? Look, personally, if I was in that position, if I was a boss of a restaurant, I couldn't live with myself, opening up a business and agreeing to this, because my actions would therefore encourage other people to sign up to it. I couldn't live with it. I couldn't live with myself, and because it's so wrong. You want things to go back to normal. You have no chance if you agree to this. If you all collectively say no, if the majority say no, you will then have actually more chance of getting back to normal. So these, look, I mean, look at these governments. They have their plans and their deceptions. They have their propaganda, their fake news, their spin, their divisive headlines using gender, using race and whatever to try and divide you all and have you hating on each other and arguing amongst yourselves rather than you know focusing your attention on them and they do this continually because they know it is us who have the power yes we have the power they know it there is power in numbers that's why we have to be from their position we have to be carefully managed That's why we have all of this deception in the media. I mean, look, if everyone out there refused these jib-jab passports, then that's it. Game over. It's not going to work, is it? If everyone can just all pull together and refuse these passports, it won't work. But at the moment, I I can't see that happening because the government and the media have got everyone's head in a spin trying to cause division, trying to get the public fighting with each other. They've been starving you of social interaction for a year. So you're now desperate to get back to going to the pub or going to the cinema or a gig or a festival or whatever your bag is. And now they want to tempt you with that. It's pure temptation. And they're hoping you're going to concede to this temptation. Of course, they know they can't get everyone jabbed. So they will say, well, for now... You can go to the event if you have a negative test. So you get that option for now. But that is also another carrot for the donkey. Don't accept that either, because if you give into that now, then in the long run, they will make you pay for the test. Or alternatively, they will make it really time consuming as possible. So make it a pain in the ass so that you will then feel you need to get the jab. So you don't have to go through the hassle of the test and the expense of it. These people are playing a chess game with the public. 
You should be having none of it. Do not comply with anything about assessing events with tests or passports. And again, if people collectively don't accept it in big numbers, stay strong and refuse it in all of its guises and don't give in, then they will give up. What the governments are doing is basically it's a massive confidence trick, making you believe they have all of this power and they don't. They are here to serve you. But you wouldn't think that. That's why you have the incessant gaslighting in the media, why you have the 24-7 propaganda, why it is so relentless. The idea is to get your head spinning. They want you to disconnect your brain from your body. They want you to not be able to think straight. They do this by bombarding you with fear in the news, fear, confusion. Your brain ends up like a hamster on a wheel going around and around. So you lose touch with your feelings. You lose touch with your soul, with your gut instincts, because if you could listen to your heart and your gut instincts, you would know that this is not right. Instinctively, you would see it for what it is. Why do they want you to be disconnected from your instincts? Because they don't want you to be a human being anymore who feels, who has empathy, who is emotional, who is individual, who has imagination, who is creative, who cares. They don't want that. That's why with all of this media, they're trying to get the neurons in your brain firing around like a pinball in a pinball machine so that you lose touch with your feelings. So you can now be easily manipulated and so that you, because you'll become detached from your senses, from common sense, you can now end up making the worst choice of your life, the biggest mistake you will ever make. They don't want human beings. They want autons, robots, unthinking dummies with microchips that can be processed. And that is what effectively a vaccine passport would do to you. You will just be another order in a long line waiting to be processed. A passport with a QR barcode that will have to go beep, beep, to let you go through into wherever you want to go, to let you get your money from your account to see if your social credit score is high enough to allow you to enter the library, to let your masked up kid to be processed before they are allowed into the school, and in the future probably to allow you to access your own home or into your expensively rented electric car if you are lucky enough to be one of the few who can afford one in the future. But if this all goes ahead, nobody's going to be lucky in the future. We need to group together locally, internationally. We need to find a way to say no to these passports, support businesses that won't accept the passport. When they say, when you hear the government say, we are all in this together, it's bullshit. But in this case, in refusing the digital ID jab passport, it's never been more true. This is obviously not in anyone's interests. You may have had the jab, you may have not had the jab, I don't care. What's important to realize is that the passport has always been the end game. The passport is your digital trap and that is what you need to refuse. If you don't, you're sentencing not just yourself but everyone else into enslavement. Pure and simple. Think I'm being dramatic? Do you think I'm being dramatic? Look at these two videos. The first one is from an ex-politician. I don't know if she's trustworthy or not, it doesn't matter, but what she says in this is bang on the money. Second video is a report on how banks are already discussing how they will use your web browsing habits to see if you are a good citizen and to work out how much they will loan you. This video and these videos coming up are warning you about what will happen if you give in to this digital ID vaccine passport. Please share this video. Thanks for listening and come and subscribe to the tribe at hugotalks.com trying to build a network of like-minded people. I'll see you later. So with the vaccine passports, none of that will be the case. Everyone has to be participating all the time. And what I mean by that is if you don't participate, you don't get let into the supermarket to buy food. You don't let it get let into the pub to meet your friends. You can't get into the restaurant. You can't travel on an airplane. You can't travel on a bus. You can't travel on a train. Um, and it's not just that you're forced to participate. 
I can't say this any more clearly. The vaccine passport platform is the same platform as a social credit system. I'm going to say that again because it's so important. The vaccine passport platform is the same platform as a social credit system, like in China, that enslaves a billion people. In China, the CCP can find any dissident in five minutes because of the 360 degree surveillance of the social credit system. And it means that when you act like a good citizen, you get a boost. And when you act like a bad citizen, opportunities get closed to you. Maybe your child doesn't get into college or get into uh, prep school. Maybe, you know, you don't get that job. You don't get that promotion. The vaccine passport that is being proposed in the rest of the West is the same platform. I can't say that enough. It's being rolled out in Israel. It was rolled out in Israel. Um, it's being uh, promoted in Britain that you have to scan your vaccine passport in order to go to a pub and have a pint. Um, it's, you know, President Biden in America said this is going to be mandated. My tyrannical governor, Governor Andrew Cuomo, said that it's got to be, you know, rolled out the Excelsior Pass um, that IBM is creating. Uh, it's, it's happening at warp speed. So please don't be fooled. This is the most dangerous tool that humanity has faced in my lifetime, if not ever, in terms of human liberty. In a recent blog post for the International Monetary Fund, researchers discussed their work studying the relationship between the finance and tech industries. And they also imagined where they could see that relationship going in the future. And one idea they bring up is pretty alarming, because they say that in the future it could very well make sense to tie someone's internet browsing history to their credit score. Yeah, that's right. All the things you look up online, all the sites you visit, all the weird crap you read about and look at and consider buying, in the future, financial institutions could have access to all of that information and use it to decide whether or not they should lend you money. And one of the big advantages they see tech companies having right now is access to what they call soft data points, which are things like what browser you use and what your history of online searches is. They say those kinds of data points allow tech companies to build a more intimate relationship with borrowers, and because of that, they might be more inclined to give them more slack and lend them more money. It's kind of like they're saying tech companies get to know people better than banks do these days, and because of that, they have a more personal relationship and might trust them more. It's like they know more about you, so they might feel more comfortable lending you money. So the researchers see financial institutions using your browsing history to determine whether or not to lend you money as a good thing. They think it'll only serve to help people because, as we all know, financial institutions, along with big tech, only have your best interest in mind. <laughs> now to me, that sounds like a load of crap, but I'm certainly not going to be Googling anything about it, that's for sure. No, I'll just stick to Googling stuff about aliens, like I always do. But in general, we should all be a little more careful about what we look at on the internet from now on, if we care about participating in society. Because pretty much everyone agrees that it will be used against us more and more the more technological we become as a society. Whether that's right or wrong is kind of moot, because that seems to be the way we're heading no matter what.